Happy Friday and welcome to the week, your source for news you don't need. I'll get a haircut next week, I promise. The Shanghai Wild Animal Park, whose staff has recently been accused of abusing animals, is hosting its annual Animal Olympics. There were monkeys climbing poles, elephants dancing on one foot, and a bear riding a bicycle. An NBC affiliate in the United States showed the circus on their evening broadcast this week. Preliminary match of the animal games is held each day until the finals, which are next month. It's kind of Shanghai's, you know, Shanghai Got Talent. Wait, did he just say it's like Shanghai's Got Talent? Only for wild animals, you know? Okay. Okay. I'm looking at that monkey. <laughs> See? <laughs> Ooh. Well, there you have it. While the animals in Shanghai are competing... The bulls in northern Spain are celebrating. A 4,000-year-old tradition of bullfighting came to an end in Barcelona this week. The law was passed after thousands signed a petition calling for an end to what they say is a barbaric sport. A ban on bullfighting in Spain is like banning hockey in Canada or sumo wrestling in Japan. It's like a ban on drinking vodka in Russia. This week, we have a special investigative report. China Daily reported a rumor that a beggar in Beijing is actually a millionaire. As the rumor spread, netizens began claiming the man can make up to 4,000 yuan each hour. That's more than 600 U.S. dollars. So is there a secret to becoming a successful beggar? The week's Christy Lee went undercover to see if she can figure it out. I dressed myself up in some old shabby clothes. I kneeled down next to a box store, officially beginning my experiment of being a beggar. I don't know how many people passed me, but only a few of them gave me money. So I decided to try some different methods to make more cash. So I'm giving my shots. And my first technique was to attract people's attention by making noise and moving around. But that just seemed to annoy people. My next choice, I'll put on a performance. But it turned out that I'm not a good dancer as well. My last option, I took out my guitar and sang a tune, a display of pure talent. So when I was really kneeling down there begging, I saw so was people's feet and I heard people discussing about me. Um, I tried everything I can, saying, dancing and uh, being a beggar is no easy job. If that beggar actually makes himself a millionaire, it gains my full respect and for the money I made today, I think I'm going to give it to the next beggar I see. For the week, I'm Christy Lee, back in the studio with Chris. Thanks, Christy. Scientists were busy this weekend trying to track a six-ton NASA satellite that was falling toward Earth at hundreds of kilometers per hour. NASA said 26 chunks of the satellite were likely to survive the descent. The problem was, they didn't know where they were going to land. Their latest projections have it splashing down in the ocean southwest of Hawaii tonight around midnight, around 12.04 Eastern Time. Now, there's a huge margin of error both in the location and the time on that. That's a pretty wide margin of error. But surely we have the technology to figure out where the satellite will land once it gets closer to Earth, right? It's interesting. They don't actually have eyes on the satellite all the time. As it's going around the Earth, they see it only as it makes passes over certain ground stations. So once it begins to drop, they first realize it when they stop seeing it up above. And of course, they wait for eyewitnesses down below. And so far, they haven't had a lot of that. They need eyewitnesses to tell them where it is? Isn't that a little late in the process to warn people that flaming projectiles are flying at them? This is especially alarming because a space telescope from Germany is also expected to hit Earth as early as the end of October. And experts expect more satellites to start falling toward Earth in the next several years. So what do these things falling from the sky really look like? 
And this right here, this is what some of those chunks are going to look like. This is actually a titanium fuel tank from a rocket that landed, came down in Mongolia last year. Hide your kids, hide your wife, because space cannonballs are about to be dropping on everybody. Here at The Week, we make it our goal to bring you the best odd news stories from around the world. So here they are in 30 seconds. A woman in Brazil who doctors pronounced dead woke up in a morgue's refrigerator on Thursday. She'll be happy to know a morgue in Turkey now has alarms in its storage units, which detect movement in case the same mistake happens again. Officials believe a piece of baggage in a major U.S. airport may have been carrying a bomb. After long delays, it was revealed an unknown passenger was marinating dead fish. Talk about traveling with the necessities. And two American men pleaded guilty to a breaking and entering charge after stealing a preserved alligator from a private barn. They strapped it to the front of their car and took it off-roading in the mud. Woof! That was one wild ride. That's our show. We'll be off next week, but make sure to check back with us after your vacation to see what you missed in the world of odd news. For all of us here at The Week, make it a lazy one. Thanks for watching.